Hello everyone, Rare Model Reviews here. And today I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video on a different series of, I guess you'd call these figures, if not statues, that I've never covered before. So, a little fun fact, I actually planned on doing this video about a year ago, but I was new to the editing software that I've been using thus far. And I kind of want to try a little bit of something new with this video, and ironic and I am really panning out the way I thought it, it did anyway, but... I really didn't have enough confidence to go ahead and use the editing software way I've been using for a year now. So I ended up really just easing my way into it, ironically, with Gunpla anyway. But <laughs> enough beating around the bush. This review is going to be, of course, about these Dead by Daylight YouTube figures that have released about a year ago again. And actually, they have a second wave coming out. If not soon, they probably are already out. But um, this actually came with a set of four. I ended up skimping out on one of the figures, that being the Wraith. And that's mainly because I wasn't, well, I've never been much of a fan of his default look. So I ended up just going with these three because I like the way they look. <laughs> so, of course, that'd be Fong Mean in her bunny outfit, Trickster, and the Huntress. Now, one thing that I always kind of have a bit of a pet peeve is that they're willing to do an alternate outfit for Funk Me, as this is not her default outfit. They didn't do the same with Wraith. I feel like his alternate outfits are a lot better than his default, so they should have maybe have considered doing something like that for him. But who knows? Maybe they'll do that in the future with other characters. I guess they just really didn't like her default outfit, and I don't blame them. It looks ugly. Go ahead and look up Fong Mean's default appearance if you care to uh, see just how ugly it looks. But moving on along here, I'm going to go ahead and look at the Huntress here first, mainly because she's the one I wanted the most out of all of them, but I decided to get the others for the heck of it. <laughs> so, starting out, much like the Funko Pops, this thing comes in a little plastic container here and just a lot of little behind us, not behind the scenes, but all the little packaging info whatever the heck comes on the bottom of this thing so this of course is going to be a vinyl figure so it's not plastic so it's made of that vinyl type material which i believe is a lot more brittle than actual plastic so you definitely want to be very careful with these things as they're quite delicate i've since <laughs> put these things on my shelf and they have not moved after this review so uh no reason to move them much at all there's no posing these things are all put in a set pose so of course if you didn't want to take them out of the box you can just remove the protective plastic cover and just pulls them just like so this thing has a sleeve over it as well so this thing can be super safe this one is marked number two i think fong's probably number one but we'll see in a moment when i get to her so of course i do have some complaints about the huntress as her color scheme is not the proper color scheme. I'm not sure if this is the alternate color scheme that you can unlock in game, but I can definitely say that this is not the way she's supposed to look by default. So I thought it was very strange that they chose this color instead. I guess they weren't a fan of the colors used um, in her default appearance. But regardless, there's a lot of cool little images and uh, what not on this thing, such as the on the back here, where it's kind of describing where her power is in game, armed with throwable hatchets. Not just a constant threat to survivors, as again, she's a range killer, so she can just chuck those things at survivors and get some injuries and downs on them. So, there's also another text here, we're not safe anywhere, which I believe is a quote from like um, when she was first like announced in the game or whatever. They'd have this one character, I think his name was like Benedict Baker or Vigo or something like that. He had all these kind of like things that they say about the killers and whatnot so you can see like all this info like all around the box like there's one right there if you caught that then again uh, i think you might have said the same we're not safe anywhere thing or whatever but overall i just really love the look of the, the figure it's very cartoonish has the of course the little signature eyes and mouth like you find for most of the youtube's figures again there's no articulation so as you can see me kind of rubbing touch on it all this is doing is giving you a chance of breaking things, but there's no reason to move this thing at all. And thankfully, the way they have this thing set up, as you can see with her little uh, cape or sash, whatever you want to call that, and the fact that she has pretty big feet, <laughs> she's very planted, so there's no stands or anything necessary. You just plop her down on a flat surface, and you shouldn't have to worry about her moving anywhere. So, of course, just giving a nice little look around. You have, like a, again, it's like this blue here, but... 
in her default appearance, her pants are blue too. So I, again, I, I think they kind of more so did this maybe to help all her colors and her outfit. Uh, what I, what's the word I should use here? Uh, pop more. <laughs> But I could definitely say there's a lot more pink on her mask as well, whereas it's usually just white. <laughs> more or less looks the same with a little broken appearance and whatnot. But that being said, I think we've just about covered the Huntress. So we're going to go ahead, scoot her over to... Uh, actually, no, let's do a 360 on her first. I also think it's very fun they have the blood to it, you know, because how cartoonish these things look. Again, it's still like <laughs> the blood and stuff on it. But uh, again, moving on to the next uh, figure here. We will be getting these two out of the box. So, fun fact, Huntress came by herself. I think she was first, and then these two came after together. So, if I got the Rave, he probably would have camped the Huntress. I'm guessing they kind of split the releases in half or something like that. Also, I'd like to mention, I believe these came from China. I think u is Chinese. Uh, so, this thing took a very long time to ship. So, if you guys order this from a U2 site instead of like online at Walmart or wherever else you may find these things. It definitely will take a while, so that's something to keep in mind. But again, on the bottom of the box, there's the same kind of product info you'd find on Huntress. And then we, of course, have all these images of the trickster itself all over the uh, box here. Same plastic little protective sheet here that you got to slide it on out. Of course, it's going to be protected with a sleeve as well, which kind of got stuck in there. So <laughs> I'm going to... Try to move this thing for the heck of it. I don't know. It's kind of stuck in there, so I guess that's just going to have to stack. <laughs> also, surprisingly, the Trickster was number one, so that was uh, surprising, especially seeing as the Hunters came out way before the Trickster in game. So right here we have, enjoy this moment. If you get so close. I believe that is a perk description, as by the time the Trickster came out, they stopped doing that uh, Vigil type thing. So you have no control. People like you never did. Again, that's another perk description. I know his three perks, they always have that little quote from the killer or whatever on the bottom of it so i'm pretty sure that says and they have this nice little neon uh soul background for it as when the tricksters released they did a little unique background in the main media of the game that kind of showed that off even if he did not come with a map which a lot of people are still demanding that they release in the future <laughs> so it looked really cool there's a nice little backdrop now there's something here in the bottom it looks like some sort of signature i'm not sure what that is about but uh i didn't notice that with the hunters but moving on along, we're going to go ahead, open this box up. And we have a nice little quote here as well. That sound when you bleed, let me hear it again. Again, that's another perk description. I've played the game long enough to know stuff like that. <laughs> so I have a little bit of nerd insight into these kind of things. But does anyone hear that song? Like, so yeah, that was a totally different quote from the Hunters. I like, picked back up on that and went ahead and uh, took that back out. And as you can see, yeah, it does have some sort of signature on the bottom of the Trickster's, uh, I'm sorry, the Hunter's pack package, just like the Trickster's. But we're going to go ahead and get back to sliding this guy back on out of his box here so we could take a good look at him. So again, if you wanted to, you could, I guess, display him like that. It looks a little awkward -y, but again, for a retrospect here, I have had these things out of their box on my shelf and they hold up pretty fine. This, no worries about them being out of the box here, really, unless you're one of those kind of people who prefer them in mint condition in the box. And I just really love this, just the Trickster's overall design, just the little brass spiked knuckle grip for the bat, the little bladed edge. It just looks really cool. They did like a great job on Trickster. And this is his default outfit, unaltered. It looks exactly the way it would on game, um, in game. And again, much like the Hunter, he's got the blood all around him. So it's just this nice. What, how do I describe it? It it is direct from the game, whereas they're not like censoring anything, but it's in a U2's fashion. So it's just you know, they both blend together in perfect harmony, and it's just it just did such a good job. All the sharp edges and lines, he just looks amazing. So this is why I definitely had to pick him up. And I love the fact that they gave him the yellow tint around his eyes, as the trickster does have these bright yellow neon cat like eyes. So very cool. So moving on along to Fong Me. The bunny outfit is a legendary skin that, well, it's not legendary rarity, but rather when the devs first released a concept art of it, people were demanding they put this skin in game, but there was issues because she has the hood over her head. But eventually they were able to kind of figure out a way to bypass the whole hoodie thing and voila, we got this wonderful skin in game and now it's in U2's form. So again, that same kind of signature there that I can't quite make out. 
maybe you guys might be able to kind of zoom in on it from the video or something like that uh, from your computers. But same issues as the trickster. That sleeve is really kind of stuck in there. So we're not going to bother about it. So a lifelong gamer and fierce esports competitor. Fong means drive to complete her objective is second to none. Now, I'm not sure if her name is Fong Me or Fing Me, but I, I've heard Google, Google Translate call it Fong Me. And the thing I love about the back there, I have True Sight, perk description, uh, is it's actually a nice little throwback to when she, uh, she was first released in the store. They had these little banners, and then they like recreated that image, but in a U2's fashion. So very cool that they did that. So this one's marked number zero. I know that there are some people that got prototypes of this thing, so... I don't know if maybe I got this thing so fast that I got the number zero print when it's supposed to be like number three or something, but it's very strange. And again, you mad. That's a perk description. <laughs> and then right here, uh, oh no, that's just me again gawking at the, <laughs> the whole artwork thingy here from when, um, again, she was releasing this store. And it was just very cool that they uh, did that. That's a nice little, dare I say, Easter egg or detail that they threw in there. So very cool they did that. So, sliding her on out. One thing that is notable about Fong Min here is unlike the others, she actually comes with a clear stand underneath her. That most likely is due to the fact that she has such a big head and pretty small feet compared to the others. She wouldn't be able to stand up most likely without the stand. So, it's very cool that they had that foresight to go ahead and do that. As a, and I'd be pretty pissed off if I had this figure that I could stand on its own because the way it was uh, proportioned or whatever. So, of course, it has the behavior, the Funko Pops logo underneath it. So, before we get around to the final comparison on the three of these figures itself, I want to, of course, kind of compare the boxes a little bit. So, of course, this is all of them kind of stacked up, how they kind of look together and whatnot. So pretty similar but different in some aspects. The backs of them and whatnot kind of look the same, but they all kind of represent a different map and whatnot. When you look around like the front and stuff like that, like the Huntress has details of her map, Trickster has details of his, et cetera, et cetera. So again, they just put a lot of thought care into these funk uh not Funkos, <laughs> U2s, and I just really enjoy them. Speaking of Funkos, they were supposed to have some Dead by Daylight Funkos, but they backed out of them last second, so very strange that they um, did that. I think it's because Funkos having some uh, financial trouble, so depending on how much these Dead by Daylight figures sold, uh, Funkos might have uh, really kind of screwed up canceling on those, but they have a second wave coming, so they must have done something right. <laughs> That's all I can say. But, again, they all come in varying sizes, as you can see. Fong Min, of course, being the survivor, she is the shortest out of all of them. Now, Huntress is actually marked as a tall killer in-game and a trickster average, so she's kind of squatting down, but if she actually was in a different pose where you're standing tall, she'd be towering above both of them, so... It's actually kind of cool that they put her in a pose that, oh, well, you actually can't remove the stand. So... If you, of course, were curious, there you go. And as expected, she indeed cannot stand up without it. So for those of you curious about that, it is safe to move the stand and she cannot, again, uh, stand up without it. So keep her on the stand. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's nice that they put her in this hunched down stance. So she, of course, still kind of looks taller because you can see she's hunched over. But at the same time, you know, she's not like drastically differently proportioned compared to the others but i think that's just about really it i can't think of anything i could possibly cover about these things besides me just continuing to gawk over how amazing they look so i'm gonna really just kind of end this here by saying you guys let me know how you feel about these figures would you like to see more of these things depending on how this video does and Again, whether you guys even care to even see me do another review of another series of these things. The second series definitely looked pretty cool. And I wouldn't mind going ahead and picking them up to show off for you guys. And of course, just put uh, head and shoulders next to these guys as well. Who knows? Maybe I might even say screw it and grab the Wraith while I'm at it. <laughs> and go ahead and throw him into the uh, collection here. So he's not the odd man now that I just kind of decided not to get for some reason. You know. But again... 
like, just like, I, I, I just really can't tell you guys how much I enjoy these figures. There's those two strange things, like, again, the Hunter's color scheme or the fact that Fong Min has gray eyebrows. I'm not sure if the skin is like that in game, too, but before I go ahead and, and rant and rave unnecessarily <laughs> uh, in this video, just by, again, showing a few images of, again, the Hunter's in-game models. You kind of peek at that and then look at how it looks here. And then the Ray figure, I'll throw him up there for you to kind of look at. And, of course, the Season 2, I guess you'd call the uh, other figures that I don't have but might consider getting, whether it's for myself or, again, to show off to you guys and then add to my collection. <laughs> but, uh, again, thank you guys all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video here, please, again, uh, give it a like. Consider subscribe. But it is, of course, free to subscribe. It's just a free way of you following me and all my videos and whatnot on the channel. And again, feel free to give some comments down below. Again, let me know how you feel about these figures, the review, et cetera, et cetera. Just whatever's on your mind, let me know. So as always, guys, it's been Rare Modern Reviews, and I'll see you in the next review.